everyone, my name is Catalyst, welcome back to the channel, I hope you all are doing well. Today's video is going to be a guide with tips geared towards newer players. Whether you are new to the franchise or new to Battlefield 2042, today we'll be going over some tips and tricks that will help you learn and digest what can be a pretty overwhelming game at the start. But don't worry, we all started somewhere, you will improve. What this guide will not cover today are what the best specialist and weapons currently are, as I have recent videos dedicated to those topics already, so feel free to check out those videos after you have watched this one if you haven't seen them already. I also have positioning guides that you can watch that give you more in-depth gameplay tips. Today mainly is geared towards players that have just got the game, as I said, and are looking for the best way to get into the game, but who knows, maybe some of you more experienced viewers to the channel will find out something new as well. Before we get into the video today, I want to talk to you all about Skypad. For those of you who do not know, I've been playing on a Skypad mousepad for over a year now, and is what I consider to be an endgame mousepad. It definitely has helped me improve at FPS games, and maybe it can help you too. The Skypad is made of tempered glass and not only provides an extremely smooth playing surface that feels great to play on, but also takes out some of the hassle of maintaining your mouse pads. You no longer have to worry about dead spots on your pad, and cleaning the sky pad is as simple as spraying some Windex on it and wiping it down. Why am I telling you all of this? Well, I am very happy to announce that I am now part of the SkyPad Partner Program, and if you are interested in trying one, now is the best time to do so, and if you use my code CATALYST at checkout, you get 10% off your order. If you're not in the market for a mouse pad but still want to support me, you can head down to the description and click the referral link that will take you to the website. Clicking that link alone helps me. Either way, I recommend giving the skypad a try once again big thanks to skypad now let's get into the video so you've just launched battlefield 2042 for the first time what is the first thing that you should do well battlefield is a game that i believe relies on good settings more than other fps titles and while 2042 doesn't have quite the same amount of customization as the games before it there is still a lot that you can do that will improve your experience the first thing that i suggest you do is from the main menu select the portal tab and then click host experience and in the top right hand corner of your screen you will have the option to type in an experience code you should type in the experience code that is on your screen right now a a n j 7 z this is the code for the no name aim trainer and you should write this down because this is something that i use daily to warm up my aim and practice with weapons and abilities this is a great tool that you can use daily but for the purpose of today's video this is a place that you want to be so you can freely test out and find your optimal settings before jumping into a live game ultimately what those settings are is up to you there is no bona fide best settings but i do have some recommendations for you of some key ones to hit Firstly, let's talk about ADS FOV. This little slider right here may seem insignificant, but it actually makes a huge difference. With this setting off, your camera zooms in much more and the visual recoil is much more apparent. This is the setting that is on by default. And as you can see, this is me trying to control the recoil the best I can with this setting off and then doing it again with the setting on. And you can see that the camera is much further back when you ADS, but the recoil gives off the perception of it being much less than it actually is the recoil isn't actually any worse than it is with the setting off it just looks like it's much more manageable and therefore it'll be much easier for you to control now there are some battlefield games where playing with the setting off is more viable like battlefield 5 for instance where it was hard to see people at times in that game and the extra zoom would help you out but for battlefield 2042 i think it's better to have this setting on Another thing that I suggest you change is your crosshair color. Battlefield allows you to customize your crosshair color and the color of your hit markers, and as with pretty much every game, the default color is white. And while I have kept it as default, I've done so because I think it makes the gameplay look a lot better. For you all, I would suggest changing this to a color that is very noticeable and stand offish, either a bright green or pink that will help your crosshair stand out at times. This will help your crosshair centering, as the default white color can sometimes get blurred in with your surrounding and it's hard to see. There are other settings such as minimap scaling, HUD opacity, the kill feed settings that I would also recommend that you mess with to try and find your preferences, especially the minimap settings as the minimap is a very important part of the game and you want to be able to see enemies when they appear on it. You're going to be looking at this UI a lot so you might as well make sure it's in a good spot. One final UI thing that you might want to consider is turning on damage numbers which tells you how much damage you're doing to enemy players. This 
is off by default, but you can turn it on to help you know how much damage you have done to a player and whether or not you should push them to finish the kill off. Now, as far as actual settings go, I'm going to assume that a lot of you watching this video have gotten the game for free via PS Plus earlier today. So that means you're going to be on controller and well, I'm not on controller, <laughs> so if you want a good controller settings guide, go check out my pal Jordy's channel. He is probably the best controller player that I know that makes content. I'm sure he'll set you all straight. Regardless of platform, it would be good to get rid of things that make your screen cluttered and messy, turning down settings like camera shake, turning off motion blur, and other effects that may make the game look worse, but your performance will be better. Now that your settings are hopefully settled, where to next? Well, I would suggest loading up into a co-op match with AI. Get familiar with how the game feels against something that is shooting back at you, and also use this as an opportunity to unlock attachments for weapons. You can unlock attachments on weapons in these co-op lobbies, and for those of you that are looking to catch up to the rest of the pack, this is a good way for you to do so. Not only can you familiarize yourself with spawn locations, the maps, the way that the guns feel, but you can quickly get attachments for those guns that you end up enjoying without spending any money on any shortcut bundles in the store. I'm not actually sure if they have those in the store in this game but I know that they did for previous games, so there's a good chance that they're there for this one as well. If you are looking for a good weapon to start with, I would recommend the M5A3. I think personally that this is the best weapon in the game, and you unlock it from the moment you start the game. This is a pretty well-rounded weapon that offers a lot of different ways for you to configure it with the plus system, and it can be a gateway to trying some other weapons and fighting your preferred loadouts. Speaking of the plus system, there is a way that you can actually increase the speed of how you switch your attachments as well in the menu. As you can see, there are numbers that correspond with each type of attachment. If you bind the plus menu keybind to your mouse buttons and then use the number keys, it prevents the awkward pulling out the plus menu then moving your mouse to the attachment that you are trying to change. If you change these bindings in practice, you can greatly speed up the changing of these attachments. Obviously, this is a PC tip. I'm pretty sure that there is a way to do this on console, but I'm not exactly sure how to do it. So if any of you out there do know how to do this trick, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. A little bit more on attachments, there are a few attachments that offer multiple sights. You can swap your scope by pressing the F key when ADS or clicking your right stick in. The type of sight that you use does affect your ADS speed, so higher power optics result in slower ADS times. It's not terribly noticeable, but it is there, so I would always recommend running a red dot sight as your primary sight and then switching for need with the plus system. You can also change fire modes by pressing the V key or pressing down on the D-pad, this is something that you're going to want to do at the start of every game for certain weapons. The G57 pistol, which is the starter pistol, has a burst fire mode that is very strong. Honestly, could be considered a primary weapon. And the BSVM has a full auto mode that is also very good. When using these weapons, you'll want to make sure that you switch the fire mode on your first life pretty much every round. Now, for those of you that are watching this video just after Season 4 launched, you'll be able to unlock Battlefield coins for free in the Battle Pass. If you pay for the Premium Battle Pass, you'll get additional currency, and while I'm not advocating you spend money on the game, I am going somewhere with this. There are some legendary weapon skins that offer different sights and attachments that are actually better than the base kit. I get asked about the skin I have on my SFAR all the time because of how clean and nice the red dot sight is that came with it. I would suggest holding off on spending your boy on cool cosmetics so you can unlock some of these better weapon sites for the game. Let's talk about spotting. There are three different types of spotting in the game. There is the passive spotting that you get when you hover your crosshair in the direction of an enemy. It will highlight their nameplate. There is 3D spotting that you can apply by pressing the Q button or the left bumper on console. And this marks the enemy on your minimap for your entire team. There is also a ping system that is similar to Apex Legends that allows you to ping for danger. You do this by double tapping the same spot button. Now, after the season four update, the spots on your minimap will tell you whether the enemies are above or below your current location. One very specific tip for spotting that you should find useful, when you get killed in the game, if you press the spot button while you are in the kill cam, you will mark a ping that your squad mates can see. This is very useful for communicating with your friends to help them trade kills. To round out the video today, let's talk about player movement and give some tips on some of the first specialists that you unlock. Generally speaking, I think a good specialist for new players to start with would be Falk, as she has a very forgiving gameplay loop for new players. A good tip for Falk, shooting at the ground with her Sorette pistol and then running over it can actually be faster than using the self heal. It really depends on the situation, but just know that you don't have to trigger the animation to heal. 
The serret stims also stick to surfaces, so you can pre-plan where you are running to and pre-fire the stims there for you to use later. Another specialist I would recommend for new players is McKay, as he is who I think best resembles other FPSs that you might have played before. You unlock him at level 15, and McKay allows you to stray faster in gunfights and has a grapple hook as the primary ability. Some tips for McKay, you can actually break your fall with his grapple hook, so if you're falling or jumping from a transport vehicle and are within the grapple hook's range, you can shoot it at the ground and it will actually break your fall. You can also cancel the grapple mid-flight, and if done correctly at a good angle, you will generate some airtime. If you do it right before you reach a ledge, this can let you glide up to higher areas or generate more speed. This is particularly helpful on maps like Manifest and Stranded that have multiple levels of verticality. As far as movement is concerned, the movement in Battlefield 2042 is relatively cut and dry. You can slide and jump to bunny hop, but there is no air strafing or any other movement based mechanics. You can slide and jump twice to get the bunny hop effect, but jumping another time will kill your momentum completely, so make sure you never do more than two jumps. Alternatively, you can jump and if you time it correctly, you can slide as soon as your soldier hits the ground and then jump again. You should know that jumping while firing your weapon increases the spread of your gun. You cannot fire your weapon while transitioning between standing and prone, so while snaking is viable in this game, you cannot drop shot. You do get a slight accuracy bonus when firing your weapon while crouching, but to be honest with you, Battlefield 2042's gunplay is already very laser-like, so I don't think you should try and incorporate this into your gameplay too much. As far as sprinting is concerned, there is no noticeable differences in ADS speed while sprinting, but there is a slight delay in firing between coming out of a tack sprint and regular sprinting. Again, not noticeable enough for it to be something that you have to tailor your gameplay around, because unless you play like a cracked addict like I do sometimes, you are going to be pre-aiming a lot of gunfights in this game. And that's where I'll leave you all today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. And if what you were looking for wasn't in this video, chances are I've already made videos with advanced tips such as specialist guides, positioning guides, and more, and you could probably find what you're looking for there. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. And if you enjoyed the video just that much, consider subscribing. Make sure you join my Discord and follow me on Twitter. Those links are in the description as well. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Catalyst, and I will see you all another time.